Have you ever been in the deep woods or in the middle of nowhere and wished you'd come out of it alive? I'm going to tell you all about my experience. Come along with me as we explore the unseen scary stories of deep woods in the middle of nowhere. Story 1. Religious but Devilish I grew up in a deeply religious cult. My uncle was expelled from the organization after abusing a 16-year-old girl. Instead of becoming a loser, he started his own cult, and my family was forced to join him. Their rules prevented me from growing up with the kind of friends I wanted to hang out with, wear very beautiful clothes or cosmetics, or listen to music. In addition, I had to start working and taking on obligations, which I hated. When I was 14, I had to buy my own hairbrush because I couldn't use the family's personal items. Within my faith, men and women were viewed as inferior, and instead of working, the men stayed at home and engaged in various sinister activities, such as having private affairs. I'll give you an example to show you just how insane these folks were. Quintus and I suffered knee injuries at school. Rather than taking me to a regular hospital, my parents brought me to a place called the Chapel, where a very tall, bearded, two-headed, black-toothed man appeared out of nowhere. He attempted to recite an incantation in an attempt to heal it, but when my knees did not improve, they were irate with me and accused me of possessing a demon, which prevented me from getting better. We left for home to return in two weeks, but I was able to slip into the hospital for necessary care, which allowed me to stay there for two weeks prior to the groove appointment. A few weeks later, our family decided to go camping for three days in a very isolated area, in the middle of nowhere, far from the city. Although I didn't feel particularly at ease with it, I had to comply, because we are a family. Furthermore, I dare not defy my uncle, who makes such demands. Before my tent was ready, I decided to go for a walk and breathe in the pure air of the camping area. I approached an ancient oak tree and chose to perch on its trunk. I closed my eyes, and then, in a moment that felt like a dream or a trance, I saw the tall, bearded man that I had seen before when I hurt my knee. This time, he tried to puncture the same knees that I had injured with his longer, full black teeth. He was dressed in a crimson robe and had hands as powerful as brazen iron. I tried to shove him, but his iron hands pinned me to the back of the tree I was seated on. He started cracking up my knee bone and dripping blood with his fingernails. After doing so, he transformed into someone else that I know and have been living with. The uncle I know. Before I could muster the last of my strength to shout out his name, I opened my eyes and was looking directly at the same scary-looking being my uncle calls priest, alongside my uncle screaming, Wake up, sleepyhead. I looked at my knee and fainted at the thought of what would happen to me if my knee bone broke. They hauled me to my tent angrily, and I closed my eyes tightly and shortly fell asleep. In my tent, I was scared when I woke up alone at midnight. I think it is highly odd that my uncle made sure everyone was in a separate tent and away from one another. My mother trusts him, even though I have never done so, and she would rather listen to him than me. But I crept up on the bed linens as though they were my shield. I asked, and later my mother came in with coffee, telling me to prepare for what she termed the purgation of demons. When he finally arrived, I closed my eyes and called for Quintus, my closest friend, who assured me he would find my location and keep me safe. I have demons in my knee that need to be exercised, this odd man told me. I was reminded of the number of times I've had devils cast out of me by this. It has happened more times than I can recall, and usually for insignificant causes. I had no one to stand up for me while I was physically and emotionally abused. I cried out in helplessness, recalling the horrible dream I'd had under the oak tree not long after arriving. I felt completely deceived, exactly like I did when I was four years old, and the husband of a Sunday school teacher had raped me. In addition, my mother raged at me and blamed me for it when I informed her about it. This demonic priest, whose eyes have turned reddish gold, and who was furious with me for not being ready for the occasion, reached out his hairy hands to commit his terrible deed before. I could wallow in my own misery over my rape experience. Short iron nails immediately jutted out of his upright position and went straight into my knees. I thought I was seeing a movie, 
but the unbearably severe agony I was experiencing made reality hit me. It felt like sharp irons piercing right through my bones. This time, all I could do was wish the agony would just go away since I lacked the strength to scream. My mother and uncle stayed outside my tent the entire time, ready to stop me if I attempted to flee, but they were unable to stop Quintus, whose father was in the military and had taken defense courses. When Quintus stormed into my tent and hauled me out, I couldn't have imagined that the terrible priest was anywhere. Even though I was bleeding, help arrived. I'm never going home again. Later on, my mother and uncle were found. Hopefully their so-called priest will come to their rescue this time. Do you know what luck is? It's when you subscribe to this channel. Please subscribe to our channel, Top Scares, where we tell scary, creepy, and horror stories. Don't forget to click on the like button, share, and comment. Let us know if you enjoy these stories and what stories you want next. Story 2. Curiosity in the Middle of Nowhere I eat a two and a half hour lunch, and I generally prefer to kill time afterward by looking at some ancient objects outside my office building. Other times, I go fishing in the adjacent creek with my crooked fishing equipment. I always spend my two hour lunch break doing this. My friend Tom is a little under the weather today, so I called him before I searched through the pile of deceased old men near my office. I therefore proceeded directly to the pile alone in the hopes of finding some treasure among this abandoned trash, or so I had assumed. Even now, the findings I made throughout my search still give me chills. In less than 10 minutes after finishing my meal, I hurried down to the location, full of curiosity and excitement. I arrived and was met by an odd, chilly, foggy air. Large, odd-looking birds swooped in my direction, sounding like a welcoming siren with their quack-quack song. The heavy clouds told me to go fast so I could get to my assignment and begin my hunt. I removed the ancient, creaky suitcases and unscrewed the seats. It's getting clear that Mr. Danny, as he was affectionately called, wasn't a very affluent man, which implies I will not find much, but I was not to give up. Just as I was about to give up looking, something large and sparkly caught my eye from a distance. As I got closer, I realized that the birds were getting closer to me. Could this be because they were finding food nearby? I couldn't tell for sure. They were different sized hawks and vultures. Though I didn't know Mr. Danny enjoyed birds, I did observe that the sky was noticeably darker and more menacing here. Evil also lurks, yet I gave in to my curiosity. I attempted to shed the attention-grabbing glisten, but the malevolent birds persisted in frightening and diverting me with their quack. I regret what I did, even though it was the wrong thing to do. The figure I had been working so hard to open, finally opened up and ripped free of my grasp when I pulled it to myself to carry it to a remote location away from these awful birds. Whoa, a gigantic talking human skeleton on top of my head that's mimicking the sound of birds soaring overhead. It struck me with a rock-sized parched skull that made a foul quack on my cheek. I cried out for help nonstop till my voice broke. I pleaded for my life, and after a few hours, the skeleton approached me and whispered in my ear, promising him and his companions two things. First, never tell anybody about this, and second, never return. I nodded without giving it any thought. I was also too timid and scared to inquire about his identity, as if he could read my mind. I'm Mr. Danny and you just trespassed, he yelled, getting quite angry. After that he let me go, and I was able to escape the ominous clouds. I got back but could not trace the lane that leads to my office anymore. Furthermore, even if I could, my foul smell would stir suspicions and questions, which I have been warned not to disclose. I went to my friend's house in another town, and kept mute all day, and probably for life. And I also changed the environment because I didn't know what lay ahead of me, or what Mr. Danny's mummy and gangs of hawks and vultures are planning against me for trespassing on their evil domain. Now if you are addicted to intriguing and scary stories, then check out our previous video, Mind-Bending Glitch in the Matrix Stories, Rain Sounds for Sleep.